Hey everybody, Drew back with the signing game 3 from the Hilliard Ohio City Championships. Game 2 saw Kyle Brandon's lone tornadoes get knocked out by a 3 energy, 3 heads Audino powerful slap. And game 1, Kyle won with uh, just behind the back of that tornadoes. So we're going to see the deciding game 3 right here. Now Kyle starts off with a tornadoes, which is his ideal starter. He wants to get that turn 280 going off and going first he's going to be able to do it before AJ evolves any of his uh, evolution lines and we will see him play down a second Tornadus and he has plenty of draw in his hand um, I would probably look to play some of that uh, AJ's hand is uh, six cards right now so he can copycat for a pretty sizable amount that would probably be his biggest opportunity for a copycat and AJ goes ahead and benches a Zerua before a collector. Now, this Carvina might not survive a turn. I might think about getting a backup one because Kyle is going to be able to attack before AJ can um, evolve. So, we will see what he gets. He decides to opt for a Sneasel instead, along with an Audino and a Victini. Now, the Victini's. Very necessary in this deck. Key for all the reflips he needs to do. Alright, so let's see uh, who he decides to power up. Looks like he's going for old trustworthy Audino before passing. And Kyle goes in top decks and Eviolite, a very good top deck form. Really limits the amount of damage AJ can do. And he decides to Juniper, which hits the DC as well. So he gets a very fast start here. And that 80 is very punishing for AJ's deck. Not many Pokemon in his deck can stand up to a repeated 80 assault. And it also allows Kyle to power up the rest of his bench. He has plenty of... He just got like a perfect energy-wise hand there. Like three fightings and another DCE. So he has the means to power up all of his attackers. And he does play a black belt it looks like. Which we see off the prize which is probably relevant in this matchup. And we see a Pokegear out of AJ. Hopefully he hits something useful. A, a collector is not really what he needed to hit there. Uh, probably some needed to draw a little bit more. Uh, I don't think his hand is too big anymore. But it looks to be four or five cards. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Because um, Sneasel can't withstand uh, the Tornadus attack. Audino is the only Pokemon he hasn't played at the moment that can. Um, but Audino is not really doing much damage. Uh, the powerful slap two heads would be 60 right now, which isn't that much. He would need to hit a perfect two heads out of two. And the odds are he's going to hit 20 damage, which is not a lot at all. Alright, so he will... Um, Power up the Sneasel, I'm not sure what his game plan is going to be. I might think about sending up Zerua for a turn and try to hope Kyle doesn't have a catcher. We know he doesn't, but AJ doesn't know that. Maybe he would try to send up a Zerua, let that get knocked out for a turn, and try to set up a little bit behind it, get a cushion going. And he will Pont instead of using that collector that he Pokegeared for. Uh, I see another collector in his hand. Which is, like I said, not good for him. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what AJ does here. And he will decide to catch her up. Kyle Brandon Zeru, which is a very nice play. It puts Kyle in a weird spot. Because this Zeru can't retreat and let him attack again in the same turn. Because Tornadus' attack moves basic energy to the bench. It kind of puts him in a weird spot where he can't. Uh, attached to the Tornadus and attack again if something else is active and he has to retreat. So we will uh, see AJ go ahead and try to Fury Swipes. Looks like he got two heads which would be 30 from uh, the Special Dark. And Kyle top decked another energy I think. So he just has a handful of fighting energy at the moment. And he benches the second Zeru. I'm not really sure why he would feel the need to do that. Um, it's just really catcher bait kind of and Zorark is not too useful in this matchup 
I can't see him wanting to copy any of AJ's attacks really uh, when Tornadus is such a better attacker already in this matchup. The 80 damage can't really be surpassed by Zorark at all. And we will see another Ponta of AJ. He's really hoping to hit something off these. I'm not sure what he's going for. But that Aldino is starting to get powered up slowly. He's probably going to maybe Fury Swipes this turn. He's seeing Kyle is not playing any supporters. So he has to really hope that Kyle really doesn't have anything. So he might think he can Fury Swipes. Get a, a tying knockout here against his Rua. And after his Sneasel goes down, his Aldino would hopefully uh, flip some very good heads along the way. And he can knock out two Tornadoes quickly. And after that, Kyle would have nothing still. So maybe that's what he's hoping for. And given the look of his bench, that might be his best game plan. So we will see the Fury Swipes. He's probably going to be able to knock it out. He only needs two heads, which off the reflip is uh, much more likely. And... He top decks a plus power looks like on Kyle's side, which is very good if AJ doesn't hit um, the Eviolite for his Audino. It would be an unsuspecting 90 damage for a knockout there. And Kyle's hand is, um, I wouldn't say it's the best hand, but it's what he needs right now. For this matchup, you'd like to see him top deck some sort of supporter, maybe collector, so he can get the rest of his... Um, Pokemon out, Trakion is huge, and it looks like he did get a supporter off the prizes. And we will see AJ use a, a collector meanwhile, really replenish his bench that is getting destroyed by this Tornadus. And we will see a Sneasel, a Corvina, and something else. What's it gonna be? Maybe another Audino, or another Sneasel. So, we do see another Sneasel. And he goes ahead and communications one back in. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what he gets here. And what he puts back. Um, he's really thinking about it. I think he put back a Sneasel. Not sure what he's going to grab here. I don't really like Zorark in this matchup like I've been saying. It doesn't... It survives with a turn. But at the same time... It's not really doing much damage. It would do 60 into Tornadus, which is, I guess, alright. But he will grab the Sharpedo, which, like I've been saying, I feel he really needs to hit Strip Bears in games to win versus a deck like Kyle's. The basics are just too big to overcome. And he had a Zorak in his hand anyways, so that comes down. And this Audino has 4 energy. If he hits... Uh, three heads, that's only a hundred damage because of that Eviolite. So that Eviolite is huge. AJ actually needs to hit all four heads for a knockout, which is just asking too much of an Audino, I feel. Even with Victini, the odds just are not there for four heads to be successful. And like we saw from Kyle's hand, he does have a plus power too, so AJ is unsuspectingly going to be uh, knocked out back. He did get three heads right there. Um, it looks like he's going to be able to uh, just keep that. I don't know why he would gamble so much to go for the four heads when it's such little odds. And he does keep the three heads. So that Eevee like that Kyle top decked on the first uh, or second turn of the game is proving to be very useful. And this plus power is going to be a devastating blow for AJ. Um, just wiping out the f the three energy that he spent powering up this Audino in one swoop with Tornadus. Um, let's see. Uh, Kyle goes on Junipers. Um, I might have waited another turn. He did have a pretty decent hand. All he really needs is energy right now, and that hand was full of it. Because uh, he just Junipered into stuff he didn't need. And he doesn't use a communication either. I would like to see him communication for a Tracheon and get that power up as well. Put that fighting energy on the Tracheon. Power up as many Pokemon as possible. He could even got a, a Tornadus. He has a DC in his hand and try to power that up too. But uh, he opts to not play it and we'll see how it goes. AJ has powered up that Sharpedo and copycatted. 
Alright. That should be a pretty sizable copycat. Looks to be seven cards. And things are not looking good for AJ. He cannot keep knocking out these huge HP basics like this. So AJ does play a Weavile. Um, he's going to see what he doesn't want to see in Kyle's hand. Kyle has pretty much everything he could ask for. He has the energy. He has the Omega if he needs to attack with that. And he has a Juniper as well. So uh, AJ really has a tough decision here. Uh, the Juniper is probably the right play. He wants to eliminate the draw. And there's so much of everything else in Kyle's hand that he can't really uh, pinpoint one card there to eliminate. So he does grab the Juniper. And he will, uh, looks like it, try to go for the Strip Bear. Eliminate those other cards in his hand. Looks like one tail's there. And the reflip is two tails. So... While AJ gets the knockout on the Tornadoes, he really needed two heads there. If he got two heads, all Kyle has is that Tornadoes with three energies. Nothing else is doing much damage on that bench. And AJ could have snuck his way back into it. But he whiffs. That's uh, that's what happens with the coin flip sometimes. And we will see Kyle play this um, communication I thought he should have played last turn. And he's going to get a Zorark, which I don't like at all either. I really want to see a Terrakion. I feel Terrakion is huge in this matchup. It knocks out every single one of AJ's Pokemon. And Kyle probably only has... Um, I think he has like three prizes left. Three-ish. So it would just be a huge blow to AJ if a Terrakion came down. It would just easily take another prize. So... Uh, Kyle powers up the Zork and looks like he's going to go for his own Strip Bear, which is not a very good attack when you don't have Victini out. And he gets a Tails there. So that would have been uh, ridiculously bad luck on AJ's part if his own Sharpedo got Strip Bared back. Uh, but he avoids it. He avoids the, the Zorark copy. And uh, that's I could see why Kyle would do it, perhaps. Uh, maybe he couldn't match hands sizes for yeah, Mega. Maybe he wants to avoid the the rage attack, but it's just unnecessary, um, silly play in my opinion. Uh, there's no real point to going for the low odds of a two heads. I think it's like 25% or even less, and it's just yeah, not not really good odds there. So let's see what. AJ does. Looks like he's going to junk arm a couple cards from his hand. Uh, his hand is actually pretty big now from that one copycat. And it'll be interesting what, to see what he drops. And to see what his game plan is going to be. Looks like he drops an Evil Light in the dark for communication. Um, not really sure why he would drop the Evil Light. He can try to protect his his bench a little bit here I think maybe put on the Victini or something like that really stop Kyle from getting uh, like a a linear attack later game two linear attacks would knock out a Victini and Eviolite would maybe save it not sure if that'll ever come into play though and he does get another Sneasel um, I don't know about that Maybe try to get another Audino out. Audino's HP is a little bit higher than Sneasel's. So we will see another Strip Bear. He needs two heads. And he gets two heads, I think. Yep. So, uh, Kyle's playing kind of backfired there. <laughs> it's just, it was unnecessary to me for him to go for the Strip Bear like that. But he's... E he is going to be able to just retreat and use Tornadus for uh, the 80 knockout here, which is, I don't see him doing anything else besides that. There's no real point to it. Oh, he just, I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe uh, the Rage was enough damage to knock out the Sharpedo. It must have been a Rage attack there. Uh, I'm not sure how much Rage's base attack was. Uh, maybe it's like... Uh, 40 plus 30 perhaps something like that so uh, AJ goes for a beat up here 
which I mean he's just grasping at straws at this point it looks like because all his Pokemon get knocked out easily by Tornadus and it does not appear like he knocked out the Zorark and Kyle's gonna just be able to retreat and get the Tornadus knockout and I would like to see that pretty quickly <laughs> so here it comes big bad Tornadus and he's just gonna go ahead and copy kit um, he really doesn't need anything at this point I would love to see a Terrakion but uh, this is actually the one moment where I probably wouldn't play the Terrakion down because he doesn't have energy in his hand anymore and AJ goes ahead and flashes his hand for us we see that he just has two DC and a, a Sharpedo, which is not getting the job done for anyone. I would, I would just like to see the quick and easy knockout here and not take any more risks. Which is, uh, there it is. So I'm not sure how many prizes Kyle has left. Um, at least one, obviously. But it might just be the one. And AJ, all he has is really, we saw the 2DC and the Sharpedo, I'm not sure what he top decked, but uh, looks like his only play is to just do the 80 back. And uh, if Kyle can't get a knockout, I would say go ahead and use this catcher, try to stall a little bit perhaps. I'm not sure if he, if he might be able to just match hand sizes, I would uh, assume he could. And see him bring in the, yep. So, that uh, Eviolite I was talking about actually comes into play. And that was the last prize it looks like. And Kyle Brand is just able to win. The big HP basics are very hard for AJ's deck to deal with. He got a strip bear, but it was very late. And it was not able to uh, save him from all the Pokemon that Kyle Brand had eventually powered up. And we see Aldino go down in the finals. It had a great run, but it comes in second place. The powerful slap was just not powerful enough to take down the whole tournament. So I'll be right back with some more videos from you guys for from different tournaments. And I'll see you then.